Hey everybody, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Today we had a question from Carlo. He said, how do you add multiple text boxes in a user form together to get the total and in fact the average as well? So we're going to explore that question today in this episode of Excel VBA is fun. Be sure and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more great content all the time, and hit the notification bell for even quicker alerts. All right, let's dive in. So we have a user form. I'm assuming at this point you know how to make a simple user form. If you don't, click this drop down when you're in the Visual Basic Editor and hit User Form. To get to the Visual Basic Editor, there's a lot of ways, but I hit Alt F11. Here's the user form one that we have built out, and I have copied and pasted these text boxes there's 14 in total and they're named text box 1 text box 2 all the way to text box 14 now text box 14 is going to be the one that contains the total or the average or whatever aggregate function that we decide to use so really 1 through 13 are really the ones that we're going to be using for the total I'm going to show you how to get the total, but I'm also going to show you how you can dynamically, using a loop, you can get the, the total more naturally, more quickly, without a lot of coding. So that's what I aim to do with this task. I have a little button here. We're going to do it with a button, and then we'll try to make it a little bit more dynamic even so, to where when you're typing inside one of the cells, or text boxes rather, it will automatically total immediately. So let's try first things first with a button, make it simple. So I'm double click on that button that I created there. And that creates this command button underscore click event. So whenever you click on the button, this is the code that's going to happen. So I'm going to create a very simple loop. I'm going to say for i is going to be equal to 1 to 13 because we know we have 13 different text boxes that we want to loop through and then of course I'll say next I to end the loop and then I'm gonna hit tab right here to kind of indent inside our loop so we're gonna do a loop that goes from 1 to 13 and every single time we're gonna do something to a variable we'll just name it C val the current value the current value uh, we're going to snowball it into itself so it's gonna be equal to itself and then we're going to say plus something. No, the something that we're going to use is the value of the current text box, and we're going to add it to the cval variable. So it's going to keep on collecting the value from each of those text boxes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the cdbl function, which converts whatever we're about to do into a double, a number that can contain decimal places that way it's going to convert them typically anything in a text box or a combo box or a list box will all show up as a string of text so that's why we have to use a conversion function of some sort to convert it to an actual number that can be easily added so here's how we can get the control by its control name dynamically. I'm going to say either user form one or I prefer to say me dot instead of user form one dot because me is dynamic and it could be transferred to a different user form with a different name. So me or user form one dot controls and then I'm going to hit open parentheses to auto complete that word. Me dot controls, let's use the string text box and then we're going to say ampersand to join that with the number 1 or 2 or whatever all the way up to 13. So the first time it gets through the loop it's saying text box 1, then it's text box 2 all the way to text box 13. That's how we can dynamically go through these. And then of course for the CDBL function I have to do one more in parentheses. Alright, so what we're saying is there's an empty variable and we're going to take that empty variable and add whatever's in me.controls uh, with the name of text box 1 the first time through the loop I will be 1 and then so let's say cval will have the number 20 in it or whatever we put in text box 1 then the next time whenever I equals 2 in the next iteration of the loop now this says 20 in it let's say but then 20 is going to be equal to 20 plus uh, whatever's in text box number two and so on and so on so without further ado let's go ahead and do that and before we actually start that I'm gonna do an on error resume next 
if there's any errors it's not going to pause and put an alert on the screen but no it's just going to go ahead and move on past it that will enable us to just be able to do it so let's take a look at some of these I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint you can hit the F9 keyboard shortcut or you can click on this little gray bar on any line that you want to pause on so we'll just put it right here right as our loop is beginning or about to begin so I'm going to hit the run button to boot up the user form and it's only going to pause or going to break mode whenever I click the button and it gets to that break point. So let's put the number 10 here and let's go over here and put the number 20. Keep it simple, right? Let's hit the get totals and here's our macro. Scooch everything here. Okay, so we've paused right here. The number I is about to be initiated. So we're going to hit F8. The F8 key is to step through one step at a time slowly. So now i has a value. i is equal to 1 the first time through the loop. So cval is going to be an empty value for now. But it's going to be equal to itself, which is nothing, plus the the double or the number with a decimal version of me.controls text box number 1. So this is text box 1. Let's go ahead and grab the value of 10 from text box number 1. So if I hit F8 now, cval has the number 10 in it. So now the next one is text box number two which we can see has nothing so cval is still going to be 10 this next time we know that it's going to have 20 added to it so cval is equal to 30 and if I just run it all the way through uh, it will actually do nothing because the last step is we need to say me or the user form one dot text box 14 that's the very last one which is the totals uh, that caption or just me.textbox14 is going to be equal to cval or whatever the final snowballed value is from that variable. So let's run it to the end and just see what happens. So the total is 30. Uh, very cool. What if I put 123.45 in there? Rerun it. I'll take the breakpoint off now and I'll just run it with F5. We're clicking the run button. Cool. So that works. What if I put something in here? 12.5. Get totals. Yep. Looks like it's working. What about negative 45? Yes, it is still working. And as promised for a couple other tasks that we need to do, we were actually literally requested to do an average, not a sum. But I figured we start with the basics, and then we'll move on to some other goals. So how do we get an average? Well, by definition, the average or the mean is to get every single number of these and add up the total. We've got that so far, right? But now we need to know which of the numbers are being added. So it depends on if we're saying it's always going to be the number 13 or if we're saying only if it's filled in do we count those numbers. So for example, that we just did this one and this one and this one and maybe one over here that would only be four numbers and then so the total of 120 divided by four entries or is it divided by all 13? You decide depending on your needs. All we really need now is to know the number. So whether we're doing the total number, which is always going to be 13 in this case, then it would be very easy to get the average if we take the total divided by 13. Now, if we're going to make it more complicated, which is always fun, then we could take only the entries that have a valid number in them. So we could actually measure that one of several different ways. We could see if cval changed. That's a little more complicated. We could frankly just see if the current control, me, dot, text box, whatever, is empty. If it's an empty string, then we're not going to increment the counter. But if it's not empty, then our little counter, we'll just make a variable that's a counter, will be incremented by one. So first it's the first successful text box that has something in there then that counter will be equal to one and the next time we have a successful entry it'll be two etc so why don't we just do that so I'm gonna say if and then actually let, let's do this I'm gonna copy me dot controls blah 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 to the clipboard make it a lot easier I'm gonna say if and I'm gonna paste that thing there if the control of the current text box we're analyzing is not empty now the word empty in VBA can represent the number zero can represent an empty string if we're talking about strings or it can even represent false if you're talking about boolean so the word empty is a really great keyword for multiple different types of values so we're gonna say if this thing is not empty then and of course we'll put our end if so that we don't forget that and I'm gonna hit tab so if this control is not empty then our counter is going to be equal to our counter plus one. 
simple incrementing just like we did here with the variable cval. So the counter is, starts out being empty or zero, and then if there's ever an entry that's successfully not empty, then it would be equal to itself plus one. That's called incrementing. All right, so let's try that. So we're going to take the total here. Uh, I'm going to put a breakpoint at the very end just so we can see what it looks like. So let's open this up here. I'm going to say 10, and then I'm going to say 20. That's only two entries. The total is 30, so the average should be 15. So let's hit Get Totals. Okay, We know that CVAL is equal to 30, and we could probably guess that CNTR, our counter variable that's new, has two entries that were successful that were not empty. So we could take that number 2, and we could divide it by CNTR, which currently is 2. So 30 divided by 2, so that means it would put the number 15 in that text box. Once again, you could hard code this to the number 13 if you weren't doing it that way, but this is just for variety's sake. So let's take this off and just run it. Yeah, so the, the average now, not the actual total, I should change the label to average, is 15. What if I put 155.6? in this one so now there's three entries the total is 185.6 and that divided by three can't do it in my head but it's going to be 60 something right yeah 61 cool so that's the average of course you could use a round function if you wanted on the total you can do whatever you want there's a lot of options there the last thing i want to do is i want to not have this based on a button i want to do it based on any of these things as they are typed upon that's going to be a change event. The change event occurs whenever a special ActiveX control like this text box is changed. Whether you're deleting everything, hit the delete key, hit the backspace, whether you type an entry, those are a change event. So we're going to have to tell all these that we need a special change event, but we don't have to tell it to click this button. We can take the code that we put in that and just put it in a regular macro. We'll call it sub get AVG for getting the average of all those text boxes and now we can just copy our successful code and put it in there paste and in fact because we just did that we could just put get AVG right here and refer the button to the same macro that way everything is referring to one centralized macro that way you only have to update this macro once if you want everything to update at the same time and be improved upon for a later better version. So now all we have to do is go here and frankly double click on this which creates a change event and we're just going to say get AVG which means we're calling upon that macro to run whenever this text box changes. So it's going to change and change and change but we have on error resume next therefore the errors won't trigger if something's blanked out or something's weird. That's all we have to do. I'll pause the video Okay, so we've basically just double clicked on all these and hit paste, control V, and we should be good. So now if I type 1, 2, 3, there's only one entry, so the average is still 1, 2, 3. But if I did 1, 2, 3 over here, that's actually a terrible example. Let's do 10. All right, great. So 133 divided by 2 is 66.5. What if we had another entry that was 50? You get the picture here. It's giving us the average. Of course, you could take that divided by whatever if you just wanted the totals. And that's how I very quickly could throw together an automated dynamic total. So if you had 400 other text boxes that had to be added to your project, if you're using the same naming convention of this next one might be text box 16 and 17 and then 18, if you're using something like that, then this system works really well. Me.controls and just simply use the name and you can use a loop from one to whatever and it's just really really a great time saver and look how much code I didn't have to write don't forget to go to excelvbaisfun.com for great resources also if you go to excelvbaisfun.com slash ninja you can join our free private Facebook group and learn all kinds of great stuff we have live question and answer sessions we have a lot of great questions on the Facebook group itself. We have exclusive free training and other awesome resources, including a slew of really great Excel ninjas who are really good, and they can help you if you have questions.